Good morning, everyone. Um, it's nine o'clock. We'll go ahead and get started on today's uh, Planning Commission meeting. Um, recommendations from the Planning Commission on certain items from this agenda will be considered by the Board of Commissioners at the regular meeting on October 6, 2020 at 1030 a.m. The Planning Commission utilizes speaker request forms, which are available in the Commission chambers during the meeting. The speaker request forms look like this. They're located in the back of the room. If, if you wish to speak on an item and you're not the applicant um, um, uh, or the owner on one of the items, uh, you can fill one of these out and throw it in the, the, the box here, right here on the dais, and I will keep me organized during the meeting. So thank you for doing that. Um, with that, um, we'll go ahead and get the meeting started, and uh, Jim is on. Uh, teleconference, so we'll go through and do uh, roll calls. Rich. I'm here. Charlie. Here. Jim. Here. Sandy. Here. Travis. Here. Kathy. Here. Deb. Here. Thank you. Uh, first item on the agenda is approval of the September 14th, 2020 minutes. Are there any changes or recommendations to update the minutes? Hearing none, seeing none, I would entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, seeing none, roll call vote. Rich. Aye. Charlie. Aye. Jim. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Travis. Aye. Kathy. Aye. Deb. Aye. Motion carries. Brings us to item number two, approval of today's agenda. Today's agenda includes uh, consent items three through six, um, regular items seven uh, through 10, followed by the county board report items from the public, items from the staff, items from the membership and adjournment. Is there any changes to today's agenda? Hearing Did you want to pull items yet? No. What's that? Did you want any that were, we were going to pull yet? I didn't understand that, Rich. I'll do that. I'll do that um, Next. on the consent yeah. agenda. Yeah, I thought yep. so. Thank you. I'm learning. Hearing none, seeing none on the agenda, um, I would entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Hearing none, seeing none, roll call vote. Rich. Aye. Charlie. Aye. Jim. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Travis. Aye. Kathy. Aye. Deb. Aye. Motion carries. Um, next item is the consent agenda. Good morning, Commissioners. Brittany Molitor, Planning Director. The following items have been placed on the consent agenda for action to be taken on all items in accordance with staff's recommendation by a single vote. Any item may be removed from the consent agenda by any planning commissioner, staff member, or audience member for separate consideration. The findings of this planning commission are recommendations to the Pennington County Board of Commissioners who will make the final decision. Item number three is conditional use permit review CU 0839 for Patrick and Marlene Sheely to review an accessory structure prior to a primary structure in a limited agriculture district. The staff is recommending approval of the extension of conditional use permit CU 0839 with conditions. Item number four is conditional use permit review CU 1633 for Clinton Newley to review a single wide mobile home to be used as a permanent single family residence in a suburban residential district. And staff is recommending approval of the extension of conditional use permit CU 1633 with conditions. Item number five is conditional use permit review CU 1737 for Ken Denke to review the use of a camper as a temporary living quarters not to exceed 180 days a year in the general agriculture district. Staff is recommending approval of the extension of conditional use permit CU 1737 with conditions. And finally, item six is conditional use permit review CU 1818 for Rowdy Dowdy and Laura Luthi, Real Simple LLC, to review a rental home park to include four existing mobile home rental units and to allow an additional 10 rental units, which would include mobile homes and or governor's homes, and to also allow a caretaker manager's residence and a shop building in a suburban residential district. And staff is recommending approval of the extension of conditional use permit CU 1818 with conditions. Thank you, are there, <clears throat> excuse me, are there any items that staff wishes to pull from the consent agenda? No. 
Are there any items that the membership wishes to pull from the consent agenda? Four. Item four. Okay. Anything else? Jim? Nothing? Okay. Um, for those folks in the audience, the consent agenda consists of items three, four, five, and six. Our intent is that we would vote on them all at the same time. Um, item number four has been pulled and will be heard with separate consideration. Are there any other items on the consent agenda that uh, you wish to be pulled? Hearing none and seeing none from the, um, from the public, um, that brings it that items on the consent agenda include items three, five, and six. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Second. And is that a motion for approval? Yes. Motion for approval. Oh, yes. Sorry. I'm I, I sorry. just said, is there a motion? I'm sorry. Yes. Um, so, motion and second for approval. Further discussion on the consent agenda? Hearing none, seeing none. Um, this will be it. Okay, a roll call vote. Rich. Aye. Charlie. Aye. Jim. Jim. Aye. <laughs> Sandy. Aye. Aye. Travis. Aye. Kathy. Aye. And Deb. Aye. Consent agenda is uh, approved. Item number four. Was there a specific question you had? Yeah, I was going to try to make it brief for you, Cody. If you go to the page five out of six, you've got a picture. That's our picture for our review for recommendations. And then if you go farther back, and I have no idea what it, we're dealing with date-wise, then you've got a pic aerial picture of the whole location. Mm -hmm. My question is debris. So How can, you know what I'm saying is, I see this picture, we're not even on the property. And yet we're supposed to hear, expect, the rules all the way along indicated that the debris was supposed to be cleaned up. But on the other picture, it appears versus about six or seven other neighbors is, is a lot more littered than the other ones. Correct. Um, so our aerial picture only goes back to 2018. We don't have anything more recent. Um, in the past, so two years. Two years. In the past two years, he's been working with staff um, in the office to clean the property up. He's got a fence on the outside now. Um, that's the only view into the property now. And then he put trees in front of it. Um, so it's kind of, it was hard to see into the property, but it's cleaned up more than what that picture, way more than what that picture shows. But he still has six or seven neighbors that could see into the property. It doesn't look like there's trees alongside of that. So I guess all I'm getting is we have a responsibility to see that it's continued to be mm -hmm. kept up or cleaned mm -hmm. up even greater than two years ago, let's say. Mm -hmm. So that was my concern mm -hmm. before I voted on it. Yeah. Um, so do you want to put the review instead of two years out? Do you want to do another year review? Is that what you're... If, but I think, can, can we ask for a picture? I mean, are we... We should at least have a picture to look at that we, we've seen some compliance or intent to comply. Like like an updated aerial or actually – so I contacted the owner. He never answered me at a voice mailbox. was full, so I could never actually get onto the property. He has no trespassing signs, so I couldn't get onto the property. Um, if you want to continue – it, then, so we can take more pictures. All right, then I'd like to add one more thing that he provide us a picture then if, okay. if he doesn't. But at least then it shows an update with some sort of date on it. Before okay. we approve it? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, that can be done. He could send a drone up to... Yeah. <laughs> Do we got a drone? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> no. If you don't have a decibel Mine's meter, I doubt sheriff, whether we Sheriff's have office a probably does. Call a real estate agent. Yeah. But I, I would like to add that then, that we do include, I don't have any problems with the two-year review or anything like that, okay. but all I'm asking for is the improvement and the compliance. Okay. So if we could do something where he's providing the picture, I haven't gotten any complaints about that either. When do you want the picture? Bye. I'll say six months prior to the review, okay. within six months. So you, you're, you're recommending that we add item nine that says something along the lines of the owner shall provide a picture documenting um, um, that he's continued to 
um, remove debris for, and upkeep the debris on the property, mm -hmm. something along those lines. Sure. Does that make sense? I'd go along with whatever staff's wording would be, but we have just so you've got something to show to other people that, you know, I may not be the one here. Somebody else. Which number one says it, right? It, is it the tw September 8, 2019 one? It, number one is that the subject prime remain free of debris and junk and vehicles, and then just say and provide a picture of updates instead of add a number yeah, nine. So that we're not guessing. Yeah. That, would, that would work fine with me. Cody, and actually, um, I don't think from six months from now, I think by the next planning commission, maybe we have a picture of what it looks like. So, uh, so do we again, I, I think we should just put a date on it. So yeah, that, so that instead continue. of six months from now, you, you kind of want to see it now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll move that we continue this item until the next planning commission meeting. I'll second. Motion and second to continue further discussion. I just want to clarify. You want to continue it with the understanding that he will bring a photograph showing the current condition of it. Is that right? Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on this item? Is there any final comment from the public on this item before the planning commission votes? Hearing none, seeing none, um, motion is to uh, continue item four to the next planning commission meeting, which is what date? October 12th. October 12th. Roll call vote. Rich. Aye. Charlie. Aye. Jim. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Travis. Aye. Kathy. Aye. Deb. Aye. Motion carries. Brings us to item seven. Okay. <clears throat> Item seven is mining permit review. Uh, it's to review the removal of gypsum hauled off of the site. Uh, the applicant is Cody Shad. Uh, the property is located at 3800 Marvin Road. Uh, it's 40 acres, um, zone limited agriculture district. Uh, this was originally approved back on December 2nd, 2019. Uh, it was reviewed again on March 9th of 2020 um just a brief history the applicant started work before a, con a construction mining permit had been approved he did pay those those fees there has been multiple instances of neighbors um filing complaints for uh dust control and debris getting on the property uh staff went out on december 7th December 13th, December 27th, January 7th, January 13th, January 14th, um, and found um, no instances of debris getting on neighbor's property. There was issues with dust control. Um, when staff was out there, staff couldn't verify any, any dust was um, leaving the property, but depending on wind conditions that day, it could have happened on another day. Staff would never say that it never or didn't happen. It was heard before the board um, on January 21st, um, and the applicant was told to work with the neighbors to bring the property into compliance and um, work through the issues. Uh, then we get to September 16th, a preliminary injunction was placed on the property um, by the Seventh Circuit Court. Um, basically telling him that he can't mine on the property and that he has to reclaim the land. I think the next trial date for that is February 3rd. Um, with the injunction and with condition number five in the past stating that he be done mining the gypsum in September of this year, um, staff's recommending ending the mining permit 1903. I'll move denial. I'm sorry I didn't hear or you. Move Meaning um, that we take away the mining permit review or or mining permit, whatever we do to, so he can't mine there anymore. Taking the permit. Yeah. All right. Second that. Motion and second. Uh, further discussion. Normally we would have discussion with uh, staff, and it appears there's members in the audience as well. 
Well, he also has some, um, Cherry also has some MSHA um, violations and stuff too. For me, um, once you have violations from MSHA and other areas, then pretty much, you know, you're in violation already. So it takes away your permit. So even if he's in court and his litigation at this point, to me, um, you know, for me, it's not the court case. It's the uh, violations that he has through MSHA and that he's not um, mining properly and doing what he's supposed to. So, Okay. Further discussion on this item? Can I, then we're recommending to... Uh, take his permit. Charge. Take his permit. I just want to be clear. Yes, sir. You're agreeing with staff's recommendation to end mining permit 1903? Yes, sir. Okay. Further discussion? Is there any discussion from uh, anyone in the audience on this item? We do have a speaker request form for item number seven. Please come forward. Kimberly Pearson? Yep, my name is Kim Pearson. I'm the attorney for the homeowners in Marvin subdivision. Um, I, rec I represent Mark Wiley and Pam Wiley, Tom Cantrell, Marion Cantrell, Robert Watts, Jessica Smith, Darren Smith, Gerald Matson, Veronica Matson, William Brown, and Kathy Wiley Brown. And you have heard from these homeowners on multiple occasions related to Mr. Shad's permitting and conditional use permits, permit requests at 3800 Marvin Road. The permitting that was issued, the construction permit and mining permit, were issued inconsistent with the covenants running with the land to the homeowners. And based upon many comments by this board and the county commission, the homeowners had to hire me and to date have spent quite a bit of money in order to enforce their property rights. We have sued Shad Corp, who is the owner of the property, and Cody Shad, alleging breach of contract for violating the covenants and nuisance. We asked the court to issue a preliminary injunction to, via to stop the violations and nuisance conditions. We also asked, and we will be asking the court for a permanent injunction at a trial in a few months. My clients attended that hearing, testified under oath in open court. We entered a number of exhibits and the judge issued the preliminary injunction. The court specifically found, as relates to defendants Shad Corp and Cody Shad, that defendants were obtained a mining permit and has been mining gypsum from the property. Defendants at attempted to obtain a conditional use permit for Lot 3R from Pennington County requesting to use the property as a contractor storage equipment yard and sawmill. That Marvin Subdivision has restrictive covenants running with the land which cover the use of Lot 3R and all of the property in the subdivision. Defendants, Mr. Shad, were informed of the existence of the covenants prior to purchasing Lot 3R. The covenants expressly provide that all lots within the subdivision are for residential use only. The covenants expressly prohibit or provide that all lots within the subdivision meet certain setback requirements as provided by county regulation. And the covenants expressly provide no noxious or offensive trade or activity shall be carried on upon any lot, nor shall anything be done thereon which may be or become an annoyance or nuisance to the neighborhood. The covenants also expressly prohibit commercial activity or business activity from being operated or maintained on any lot within the subdivision. Defendants are mining and extracting gypsum from Lot 3R in violation of the covenants, which prohibit commercial and business activity. Defendants are further operating a construction equipment storage yard on Lot 3R and have moved a backhoe, trailers, and other heavy equipment in and out of the property via Marvin Road, which of course was the conditional use permit he requested and was denied. The sign requesting that conditional use permit is still hanging on his property and has not been removed, despite the denial of a conditional use permit. So ma'am, can I stop for you for a second? Sure. Um, as a government entity, we do not recognize covenants. So what we do is it becomes a civil matter which you are in now. That's why at this point we did not deny because we do not recognize covenants as a government entity. Since I was at the city or here or even at the state, um, if if we'd like to as commissioners or 
Planning Commission, um, you can, if you'd like, uh, make those stipulations, but um, I'll just keep saying you keep saying covenants and that that's between you and the neighbors and civil court, not uh, what we do in government. Yes, I'm fully aware of that. I'm also a former uh, county attorney. Okay. So I just wanted you to know that when you're reading. I am reading the court's order and the findings of the court so that this entity can understand what the preliminary injunction is. Right, which is civil. But it relates to the property. Okay, but we just denied it. You know that, right? We denied his permit. So at this point, we are following through with what M. Shaw and um, this entity believes is it has nothing to do with the covenants that you are going to court with. Okay, thank you. No, we're denying the permit. Uh, yes. Colin McNeese for the state's attorney's office. Technically, you guys haven't voted yet. We have not so voted. So you yet. haven't denied anything because yeah. we still have to get other comments and stuff. So I just wanted to point that out. I'm going to go sit back down. Okay, <laughs> so she can read all about her covenants, even though we know that we don't recognize covenants. And this is a civil matter. Colin McNeese again. Uh, Deb, uh, excuse me, uh, Commissioner Hadcock. You're good. Um, yes, uh, she thinks it's relevant to your guys' decision. And then although you guys don't enforce covenants. It is part of the civil case, like you said, and the court's findings that he can't do it. And then as part of the remedy for that, he has to return the land to its former state. So I think that's relevant considerations. But is it temporary? It's temporary, so does he have to, at this point, turn it back to, well, not because of civil matter, but because of what we are saying, we've denied his permit. Well, when you guys vote, uh, if you vote to deny his permit, remove his permit, and end, end the permit, end the then permit. he can't engage in any of the activities. The preliminary injunction is just that. It says he can't do this and he needs to then restore, return, the, property. restore the property. But the final trial on that's not until February. So he had to meet four elements as... Ms. Pearson um, has mentioned, and then it's also in the findings of fact and conclusions of law of the court. But again, it's just a relevant consideration. It's something that he's probably not going to do until the okay. final trial, because yes. once that becomes a permanent injunction, um, but I can't tell you that for sure, because I'm not his attorney and I'm not him. But, but at this point, um, would, it, would they have to go to court if they already, if today we end his permit he no longer is, is on 3R, his conditional use permit is done, um, then bottom line is um, what would be the point of a court case when you just denied um, his or ended his permit, mining permit? Commissioner Hadcock, that I, think makes I, sense? Under, I think I understand your question, and that's really a question that Mr. Shad would have to answer as far as whether that's something he wants to pursue or not, but that's not something that I think this board needs to consider no, today. I meant, the, I meant the neighbors at this point, if you ended, if we ended the mining permit today, what would be the point of, of going to court when he can no longer mine on that property? Because we can come back if he meets the MSHA and stuff. Is that what you're saying? Well, I, I can't speak to Ms. Pearson and her client's reasons for wanting to continue if, if this board were to vote to end the permit. So let me ask you something, Colin. So if he met the MSHA requirements, if he met what he was supposed to, and we don't recognize covenants, and he comes back, and they went to court because of covenants, can he get his permit again? The court would enjoin him. So I think that's kind of what they're doing here. And I don't mean to step no, on correct. your toes, but they're trying to get an extra layer of protection. So the covenants, like you had mentioned, are a civil matter, and they protect them civilly. As you rightfully pointed out, the county commission doesn't enforce covenants. But what you do do is enforce your ordinance and subdivision regulations, and he met all of those. Right. So he was entitled to a permit. But if you were to meet all of his MSHA requirements and all the requirements again, then Pennington County would likely have to issue him another permit. So I think that's why they want to get the permanent injunction to ensure that doesn't happen again. And I apologize if I stepped on your toes. Okay, so 3R basically is going to court over covenants. And if 
it becomes permanent, um, then this body cannot issue another conditional use on that based on he went to court on covenants. That's my bottom line. I'm just yes doing this. and no. You I'm are also correct. doing this for the neighbors so they understand so they're not going through the process and then coming back and going, okay, I just paid lots of money like Kim said uh, and then end up having to go back to court because they, it's no longer... You see what I'm saying? Yes, I, I, I understand your question. And I think the answer to that, Commissioner Hadcock, is that he, if he met all the requirements, we would have to give him a building permit because it's ministerial. But if the injunction were in place, then he can't do those things. So that, I think, is what they're trying to do. And if the injunction, which is, again, the civil matter, and that's going to be determined in February, that's going to be where they find their protection, not necessarily from this board. If that makes sense. No. Um, <laughs> Are you guys getting that? It seems like at that point, the covenants. Sort of, but I actually have a kind of tack on question just to make sure that I understand something. If we deny the permit today, um, due to all this. We're, we're, not, we're not denying anything. We're ending, well, ending the, permit. the permit. I'm sorry. Yep. Ending the permit. Things. What does that do for the reclamation process? I saw the court order said he has to reclaim the land, but if we end the permit, which has the reclamation plan in it, if we end the permit, what does that do? The staff packet indicates that the reclamation of the property I don't want will be to... covered under the construction permit CP 1918 and the preliminary injunction. Okay. I just want to make sure that the reclamation portion of that. So that's what I was really. Charlie, you had a question. Yeah. And actually, we kind of answered it already. That's what I was wanting to stay away from. Um, drove by there the other day. There's some activity going on, whether it's what the court ordered that's being done. I have no idea. I didn't drive around to find out. But a question I always have for uh, any of the neighbors is, where are these folks located in conjunction? I forget covenants. I would like to know where they're located in conjunction with this property. Just, you know, and I'm not... Charlie? Up on this map here? Yes. I'll show with the cursor. Um, so this is lot 3R. This is the subject right. property with the mining permit. This is Russ and Kathy Brown, and their house is okay. right here. All right. Down here is Jessica and Darren Smith. Okay. Here's Gerald and Veronica Matson. Uh, Mark and Pam Wiley. Tom and Mary and Cantrell. And then Robert Watts. Okay, they're all located along the uh, the entrance route to the. Uh, yes, this is a, This is Marvin Road that comes sure. in private road. And that does mean something to me as commissioner. In other words, who if you have complaints or if you have people objecting mm -hmm. to something, that matters to me. And, and I realize covenants are in place on this too, but that does matter to me to who these folks are. Yeah, they, the vehicles drive by all of their properties on, on the way in and out to that property. That's the only way in and out. Okay, and then one more for, and then I'm done. The, the items are specifically listed on the injunction that he has to perform supposedly, I would say right now, between, be prior to trial, is that correct? That is correct. I mean, he could object to it and get his own attorney to write why, but I'm saying at this point in time, a judge is saying, uh, Cody, do this. Correct. And it, it's likely he's probably not going to do it until there's a permanent injunction. But technically, the court order does say he has to do it now. Or he might do what's beneficial to him and not do something else. Uh, however, you're sure, or I'm asking you, then we're not infringing upon any judge's order or Mr. Uh, Shad's rights by then ending something and sticking him out into uh, the ozone layer with his activities because there was activity out there. Now, I, and like I said, I don't know whether it was just moving stuff around, but it appeared to be dirt. <clears throat> Commissioner Johnson, I think what you can do and what the entire planning commission can do is really put the covenants to the side and put the preliminary injunction to okay. the side. 
I think there's enough facts on which you can base the decision to end or continue the permit based on staff's recommendations, notwithstanding the preliminary injunction. Considering the preliminary injunction is certainly relevant. It's something that you can do, but the court's order, if this board were to end or continue, would not have an effect on the court's judgment here. Just, and why I was pushing this is I, hoping that our inspector doesn't become the inspector for the court as to what reclamation activity should, shouldn't be done and how it's done, the quality it's done. That's where I'm coming from. I don't think we want to get involved in that situation either where we're deciding that he's met our guidelines at some point and maybe not the judges or either. Follow me? Go ahead. Um, Cody Zach, environmental planner. So, in our um, in our ordinance under 507 and in the state state law, he there's certain requirements for reclaiming after you're done with the site. Um, we wouldn't wait till February for him to get done reclaiming the site. If it's not done within a certain amount of time, he'll be uh, the property will be abated, and the county will go in and put um, do the work and then put a tax. I can't think of the word on it, but assessment on the property to to reclaim the to reclaim the site. So you're telling me that in in effect, we probably will end up the inspector as to the um, correctness uh, of the. We'll we'll only be a and then I'll only be the inspector for what our ordinance requires, um, which is seventy five percent of what the former vegetation was there prior to him working. Um, so once that's met, his construction permit will end, and then the um, county and us, we won't have really anything to do with it. Are you uncomfortable with any of the listings of what the judge is asking? <laughs> uh, that's out of my will that realm. Will, no, but I'm saying will that all fit under what you're doing? Going to do? Yeah, he's gonna. He, well, he's gonna have to reclaim the property, and he's gonna have to reclaim it under what our requirements are. Before us debatement, I assume while he's doing it. Yeah, unless I mean, unless he does it himself willingly. Like that's what started this whole thing was dust. Mm -hmm. Um. So if it's not bas basically what it is, if the site sits dormant for more than fourteen days, it needs you need to start reclaiming it. So if he's not doing anything on it, um, he needs to reclaim it within okay. fourteen days, which I would. According to him, it's been more than 14 days. I just wanted to make it clear that, Cody, these things, and it's just like the neighbors. We've got the judge, and then we've got the county ordinances, and we've got the state involved there. It's very easy to have differences of opinion on how far you go on what and do what and who's responsible for what. In this case, we are ending his uh, permit. And what I'm trying to do is not stick us in a, a, a peculiar position, something we can be comfortable, as well as any doors to get out of on his responsibilities. Yes, Commissioner Johnson, I just want to bring you guys back to whether to the agenda item is whether to end it or not end the permit. <coughs> Go ahead, Kathy. If I may, just um, it strikes me as that um, looking back at the history of this, that this permit was first granted in December of 2019, and it was renewed or extended. We approved the extension of it in March of 2020. But one of the conditions of that approval of the extension was that excavation and hauling of gypsum from the site terminate in September of 2020, which is we're at the end of September. So the even you know completely setting the the, the civil case court case aside it strikes me that this mining permit has come to its natural end uh, and if this does nothing it's the other dirt work the reclamation and so on as pointed out in our in staff report will be covered under the construction permit which is still in place so I mean it just seems to me that ending this mining permit is consistent with consistent with its natural end which was um, spelled out and one of the conditions when the extension to was approved in, in March. Right. So either way, he's not going to be able to mine. We took this mining 
permit. He's not going to be able to mine also because we ended his conditional use permit because of it's September and we gave him a deadline. So, again, then just telling your neighbors, unless he plans to come back or we plan to do it again, but after this complaint and based on these complaints at this time, um, I'm pretty sure he won't even come back. <laughs> so that'd be up to you if you want to move forward with your um, issues that you're having with him on your property. Um, again, for us, um, we were trying to tell you that before, that covenants on us, unfortunately, uh, do not govern us in one sense. In the other, we do listen to your complaints. But we also had Cody going out there based on that and had no findings. So um, at that time, again, we knew it was going to end in September. So just food for thought for you guys if you wanted to move forward or, like you said, um, that the cost of this moving forward and what that costs you as well. So thank you. Any further questions? Did you have anything else? Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't done. <laughs> okay, please continue. But I'll I'll jump ahead. Um, I have obtained what I believe is the entire planning department records related to the permits of Mr. Shad. Um, the mining permit application was for twenty million cubic yards to be excavated. Twenty million, and this my, his construction permit was allegedly to build a pole barn. That is an excessive amount to be excavating to build a simple pole barn, when there's already a very nice pole barn on that property. The construction permit is for a depth of 130 feet. A commercial building story is 14 feet. So his request on that construction permit equates to nine stories deep. One wonders what kind of pole barn needs to be nine stories deep. I'm not sure what inquiry was done by or prior to these um, permits being approved. There were certainly no plans presented. I have the entire file. There is no plans in the file. The mining permit as approved, as we have discussed, does include certain conditions. Those included that he followed the, the conditions of the construction permit continually, which included that Mr. Chad follow all requirements, guidelines, and criteria for stormwater and erosion control. Those have not been met. That the site be revegetated as required by 507A5C, that has not occurred. That the permit be reviewed in three months, that did not occur. Mr. Chad requested and obtained an extension of his mining permit and a review was supposed to occur three months after the extension, which would have been in June. That did not occur. At one point, staff did uh, tell Mr. Shad he needed to install a silt fence. No silt fence has ever been installed. So despite these numerous issues and complaints, there's no record of any follow-up on the violations or the conditions since January of this year. It is now September. This was supposed to be reviewed every three months. At the Planning Commission meeting on May 26th, when the conditional use permit was before this board, uh, Planning Commissioner Lassiter asked uh, Mr. Sack when the mining permit was supposed to end, which Mr. Sack indicated would be up at the first meeting in September, which it wasn't, and that the permit would be reviewed in August with the applicant. And I've seen no record of that occurring. So to date, nothing has been reseeded, reclaimed, filled in, or erosion control measures put in place like a silt fence. Mr. Shad has not complied with the terms of the permits, but no action has been taken to enforce those conditions. Uh, he has not yet begun complying with the court's order, which he does have to comply with immediately. That is the court's order. So when he doesn't, we'll have to go back to court and make him comply. However, because Pennington County granted this permit, it is incumbent on Pennington County to ensure that the proper cleanup and remediation measures take place. And it would certainly be appropriate for the Planning Commission to fully review the construction permit and revoke it in light of the injunction. It would certainly be helpful to my clients who are taxpayers and residents who've taken time out of their lives and away from their jobs to attend numerous commission meetings. 
It would be helpful if this board would enforce the conditions and the reclamation of the property. At one point, it was suggested that maybe bonding for permits for these permits should be done. That would have been a fantastic idea because this property is under a contract for deed. So what is likely to happen is Mr. Shad is going to do nothing. He's going to renege on his contract for deed and the prior owner is going to be less left with this mess. This board uh, does consider the other entities such as Rapid City and different state agencies when they are, um, when permits are requested. It would really be advisable to consider the residents of Pennington County and the HOA and the covenants because they've had to go through like seven meetings that they've come to because of this constant battle. Now having to go to court, spend money that could have been avoided if there had been a little bit of inquiry and maybe a condition that one of the conditions of this permit is you get approval by the HOA. So we support ending this mining permit. Thank you. Chairman. Go ahead, Deb. Cody, can you come up for just a sec? So um, on record, nothing has been done and there's no record of you ever going out there. Do we have records of you going out there, checking the properties? Because I know as commissioners, as planning commissioners, we have had you go out there numerous of times. Prior. We have taken pictures of this. We also have to consider in our decision-making both sides. So we take and consider the law, and by law, um, we don't recognize covenants. We keep saying that. Unfortunately, um, you can have an HOA, and again, an HOA is covenants. We do not do that because a lot of times uh, people should um, look at what, um, when people are doing properties, they don't always want to comply with HOAs. So they either get out of them or they do something different. So you can, we can say do HOA and they could just say, we're not going to be in their HOA. We don't want to be in their association. So you can say those kind of things, but I've been in I'm, politics a I'm long time. I'm not sure that you understand how covenants work. Okay. Uh, actually, I do because I've been in the city and the county, ma'am, and both times, every time Are I've been in Are you licensed to practice law in the state of South Dakota? Let's, let's just keep this to uh, the, the facts here. <laughs> okay. So here's the bottom line, ma'am. Uh, we made decisions based on facts, and unfortunately, you don't feel they're facts, and you're going to court with them. So... And the judge found the them cash. to be facts. I'm talking. Thank you. And then you can. If these guys want to keep paying for something for you to keep uh, representing them, that's fine. But the bottom line is we are ending the permit. We are um, making him comply with these things that are on here now that he has no mining permit. That's how, the, that's how we work in Pennington County. We can't make everybody happy. And we try to do the right thing by people because it didn't work out for your clients. Go ahead and smile. I've done this a long time. We've done many good things for people. Um, the way you are talking, we act like we don't do anything. I've we seen, have I've seen it on. in other cases. Hold on, ma'am. Quit interrupting. Let's, yeah. let's hold tight here. I, I, don't, I don't want any more interrupting in, in the meeting. Deb's going to finish her questions for Cody. And, and then if there's further questions, we'll, we'll come back to you. My bottom line is our staff does a great job. They do what they're supposed to. They follow the law. And uh, we respect that. If that doesn't comply with your rules and the, the neighbor's rules, I apologize for that. But I'm going to back up Cody. I'm going to back up our uh, position at Pennington County. I think we do a great job when we try to do both sides and by the law and what we know. I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know all your rules and regs. I only listen to our lawyers and our staff members, ma'am. And if that doesn't comply with you, I'm sorry. But I'm going to back up Cody. I'm going to back up uh, our people here at Pennington County. Thank you. Can we call for the vote? You can call for the vote. We have another speaker request form, though, that I would that I would like to get to. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Chair, if I may, again, uh, I I heard over the last couple of minutes that um, the permit has already been ended. Again, you guys haven't voted, as Commissioner Rundy has said, so it's still up in the air whether you're going to. End the permit or continue the permit. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The next speaker request form is Russ Brown. Uh, 
Good morning. My name is Russ Brown. I own the property just to the south of the shed development. And with all due respect to the commission, to the staff, nobody, nobody but one person has knocked on my door and looked for damages, looked for debris, looked for dust. Nobody but one person. Mr. Russ, in respect, um, I'll be up straight. We have, as commissioners, had Cody take pictures, and we also have drove in those areas. Um, so we do look at them. We don't knock on people's doors because we have people mad on one side or the other. We also, I haven't talked to Cody either. What I do is I, and, and commissioners, usually as commissioners, if I'm correct, we go and drive the area. So we won't knock on your door, sir. Ma'am, I've got a six foot privacy fence around my property. Yes, sir. How are you going to see from the road? How are you going to see any damages or any debris in my yard? You're not. The pictures that were sent. What pictures? The pictures that I sent. Right. There's people that sent pictures so, of the debris. But all, I listened to Cody talk several times about he did site visits right. and found no damage. That is a lie. There is damage. Okay. Based on Period. what you're saying. Thank you, sir. I would just like to say I never said there wasn't any damages. I said I didn't see any, like, sediment going on to the site, and I said multiple times that I would never say that dust never happened. So. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Is there anything further? Nope. Let's call the question. Is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to speak on this? Um, when you call the question, there is no vote. I understand that. I want to make sure that we're, we're following the, the rules set forth by the state as well. Okay. Um, roll call vote. Rich. Aye. Charlie. Aye. Jim. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Travis. Aye. Kathy. Aye. Deb. Aye. Motion carries item eight layout plan. Good morning, Commissioners. Jason Thennison, County Planner. Just give me one second to pull my slides up. Agenda item number eight is layout plan 20-06. The applicant is Walter Jensen, and he has requested this layout plan in order to subdivide one lot, uh, create lots 1A and lot B of Columbus South subdivision. As the property sits today, it is zoned general, or limited agriculture district with a planned unit development overlay. That PUD was approved in October 2008 to allow a special res specialty resort and a bed and breakfast uh, for events. It was since then amended in November 2009 to allow for an additional 50 guests. The property is 20 acres. It takes access off of Nemo Road, is located in an undetermined flood hazard area. Uh, it contains a single family residence, a pole barn, two on-premise signs, as well as a permitted on-site wastewater treatment system. Proposed lot 1A will continue to be zone limited agriculture district with the PUD overlay, which meets a 10 acre minimum lot size for limited agriculture district uh, consisting of 17 acres. We'll take access off Nemo Road, will contain the single family residence, pole barn, two on-premise signs, as well as the on-site wastewater treatment system. Lot 1B, uh, further east there highlighted in green, uh, will be zoned limited agriculture district. Future land use is rural ranchette. Lot size will be three acres, which does not meet the minimum lot size requirement for the current zoning. We'll take access off of Nemo Road and is vacant of any structures at the time, at the moment. The request was sent out for interdepartmental review. I had a couple comments that came back. First one from County Highway, stating that both lot 1A and lot B must use the existing approach off of Nemo Road and existing drainage ways must be maintained and not obstructed. These are captured as uh, conditions of approval. And the second comment that came back was from the county floodplain manager stating that the subject property is in an area of undetermined flood hazard, uh, flood hazard zone D. Uh, however, there is, concerning, there is concern of flood hazard from Box Elder Creek as it flows through uh, the entire subject property. As you can see here, I highlighted it red, kind of the outer banks of Box Elder Creek. 
And you can see historic uh, flooding there in this area. Uh, staff, as of writing this staff report, uh, we were in conversation with the state FEMA representative uh, as to what we could enforce uh, as far as him actually having a flood study done on the property. And it turns out that Pennington County in our floodplain ordinance doesn't have anything that would enforce that, nor does FEMA. So at this time, uh, staff would like to uh, change condition number six and have that read that prior to minor plat submittal base flood elevation data should be established for the proposed lots to indicate any potential special flood hazard area. Should be. Should be. And staff's analysis of the request is that proposed lot 1B is three acres, which is below the 10 acre minimum lot size requirements for a limited agriculture district. Therefore, the applicant will be required to rezone the lot to an appropriate zoning district or obtain an approved variance to zoning. And planned unit development amendment PUD 0908 will need to be reviewed once the new plat is filed with the register of deeds to ensure new legal description is updated and that approved conditions are being met. And lastly, uh, sorry. Staff finds no significant issues with the applicant's request as it appears to be in harmony with existing lots and current land use in the area. And staff recommends approval. Thank you, are there any questions on this item? Go ahead, Kathy. Um, on the third page, three of six, under where you describe lot 1B, on item two, future land use, rural ranchette, three acre minimum. I thought rural ranchette was five acre. I thought it had to be uh, low density suburban to do three. Uh, so with the new zoning that came with our comprehensive plan, yes. we renamed all those zoning districts. Our, our section 200 is is in the works to be updated now. I believe Rural Ranch Ed is three acre minimum lot size. Really? Oh, it's five. Oh, oh, my mistake. Correct. It oh, is five it acres. It is yep. five. Okay, yep, that's you're right. what I was thinking. Yeah, okay, thank you. Apologize for that. I have two questions. Um, the first one is underneath the analysis uh, item D. Uh, it says planned unit development will need to be reviewed once the new plat is filed with the Register of Deeds to ensure the new legal, legal description is updated and that all approved conditions are being met. And my question is the sequence of process. Um, if the new plat's filed and it's not, and it doesn't ensure the new legal description is updated, um, or the PUD doesn't happen at the same time, is there a, are we going forward on the plat without should the PUD happen at the same time to make sure that they're both being approved at the same time? Right, we'll try to line those meetings up about the same time that they file with the Register of Deeds. Jerry has it on the calendar now uh, to okay. trigger that once it is filed. It just says that the, that it will be filed with the Register of Deeds and I'm thinking to myself, once it's filed with the Register of Deeds, we may be too late. Right, I, I was concerned about losing visibility on it too. That's why it's on Jerry's calendar. So we'll get it on the, the first meeting after it's filed. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm not a certified floodplain manager. Uh, are you? Are you a C CFM? Yeah. Okay. So now my next question is your discussion on item number six. Um, the uh, back in the day when I used to do a lot of this type of work, um, there, there. I think it's entirely reasonable that this board require them to show or illustrate that these structures. Um, would be out of a, a theoretical flood location. And so in, in areas that have not been mapped, if, and that's this situation, is that correct? That is correct. Um, but the but Box Elder Creek does have peak flows during flood, uh, various flood sequences, 10 year, 100 year, all this stuff, right? Assuming so, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, isn't there a process um, that FEMA has where where you go through and you estimate flood elevations in zones that have not been mapped? So it's a requirement that they provide that data in a zone A, which is identified special flood hazard area, but it's okay. unstudied. So if that were the case and this property was in zone A, then they would be required to provide those base flood elevations to us. But since this is zone D and it's unstudied at all, there's no requirement through FEMA or our floodplain ordinance that would make them do that. 
could couldn't they theoretically go out and take cross section measurements across the creek and the and the drainage ways and then know the know know the the the, the conveyance amount and and estimate that? They mean, meaning FEMA or they being I'm the property saying, owner? They being the property owner. Uh, what, they, they certainly could. What I want to make sure is is that uh, just because uh, enough information isn't there today doesn't mean that we allow someone to go do something that um, they could figure it out or they could at least get a very good estimation of what it should be. Right. I would, I would have, as staff, uh, we would highly encourage they get a floodplain study done on that property because, uh, as you can see here on the, the slide, uh, there have been historic flows through there that exceed the banks of Box Elder Creek. I agree because they always change that FEMA map. So you're right, Rich. They change it depending on, I don't know what that depends on, but I've seen it in the years. I've seen it over the years, and you're an engineer, and Kathy is. They've changed those FEMA maps a lot. So I know that because mine went from a zone X to a zone A all of a sudden. <laughs> So zone A means flood hazard, and anything past flood hazard, the 100 or 500 year, they're not requiring anything? They would be required if this was zone A. They would be required to provide that those base flood elevations to us. So A Let's, is flood hazard, and B must be 100-year floodplain? Uh, or it's not, A is the whole... Zone, zone D is what we're talking about here, and this that means that it's unstudied. No one's just gone out and done the physical work in the field uh, and cross-checked it. And so legally, it doesn't, there is no map. So legally, by our standards, can we still put that on there that they should require it based on what we've seen in the pictures? Uh, that's why I changed the uh, condition number six to they should do that. Well, staff would highly encourage they do that for future development just for uh, their own safety. But we don't have anything from FEMA or in our floodplain ordinance that states they have to do that. Okay. Well, Jason, can I ask a question? Go ahead. And you might have to answer this too. We had a number of those years ago around uh, Johnson Siding in the building uh, that we used to require them to do some special because not the maps didn't exist uh, on that site or that sort of thing. Do you remember that, Brittany, when you first came here? Um, I don't remember that specifically because I wasn't so much into the floodplain. Um, just with the zone Ds, they're somewhat frustrating because it's obvious you can tell there's sure. potential for flooding. I mean, I think it would be um, not on, you know, not in a good or poor taste for us not to actually acknowledge it and and make the property owner aware there's another plant that has a similar situation on the last item that's the same thing it's obvious there's a creek that goes through there it's a zone d it's just that they didn't study that area that doesn't mean that the flood potential isn't there so that's our concern and bringing it to light i think to the property owners and to the surveyor is important um, whether they agree um, and want to do that I guess is. We used to, one of the things we did, I do remember, was actually make them file a plan. We had it in our in, instructions or conditions that they had to file a plan, emergency route leaving or something, because we could see that it wasn't, uh, was a potential uh, for that. And they had to have that when they went to, for their building permit. That was one of the things I remember we did. But there are a couple of them uh, that we, and I remember most of them were up near Johnson Siding, how the stream meanders up there. But just throwing that in for what it's worth. And I would probably recommend that when we um, come to you with our flood damage prevention ordinance, um, that this will be addressed uh, moving forward. So I'm going to extend off what Charlie just said. And, um, is there anything in the building permit that re that has teeth that requires a building to be out of the flood plain, floodway, even if it's not mapped? Nothing that speaks to it uh, being unmapped, no. Hmm. Okay. Any further questions? One on more thing. We do make them do fire mitigation pro uh, things now, don't we? Could we do something in that sort of? I mean, we do with properties, we've done included fire mitigations, haven't we, in conditions and stuff? Right, so. Couldn't something like that similar, similar head in that way. direction, perhaps in our ordinance? Maybe not on this because it wouldn't, wouldn't be appropriate. Right, so our flood damage uh, prevention ordinance is coming due. 
uh, to be reviewed and this will be captured in there going forward. Okay. So that's how we'll address it. I'll be quiet. <laughs> Further questions? Hearing none, seeing none. Um, there's no questions from the public on this item. Either recommendation uh, from staff is approval of layout plan LPL 20-22 with 11 conditions is there a motion. Motion and second, further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, seeing none, roll call vote. Rich. Aye. Charlie. Aye. Jim. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Travis. Aye. Kathy. Aye. Deb. Aye. Motion carries. Brings us to item nine. Good morning, Stephanie Jansen, Planner One. Item nine is layout plan LPL 2027 for Keith and Lona Lau. On August 24, 2020, the applicants applied for a layout plan to subdivide lot five of the Lau subdivision into two lots, creating lot 5R and lot six. The purpose of the subdivision is to have a lot for their son to live on. As it sits today, the existing lot five is zoned low density residential and it contains a farm utility building. In addition to the farm utility building, a manufactured home with attached garage and covered patio and a prefabricated storage shed. There's no special flood hazard on the property. Um, proposed lot 5R would be 3.32 acres plus or minus. The proposed lot 6 would be 1 acre plus or minus. The 1 acre lot would need to be rezoned or they would need to obtain a lot size variance because it does not meet our future land use, which is low density residential where the minimum is 3 acres. Staff found no significant issues with the applicant's request and staff does recommend approval of layout plan LPL 2027. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff on this item? Jim? Kathy, go ahead. I just have one question, comment for just kind sure. of point of curiosity. You know, by the way that the lot is configured and there's the, the you know, the access point off of High Sega Road and so on, I mean, that probably has some, there's probably something, you know, in the history of all this that made it that way. But <laughs> you know, now, given the now that this other road, Wheaton Road, is constructed, probably Wheaton Road wasn't constructed at that time or something, but why, why couldn't they do an access off of Wheaton Road? What would be problematic about that? Um, all I know is that when they originally subdivided the lot, because it's been subdivided before, um, they were told that they needed to have access off of Pisica Road. Mm -hmm. And then County Highway had a comment saying that they would like them to use that same access because that's what was previously addressed. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it, that's the established driveway, so it's all, all fine, but I was just thinking, sure. what would be wrong with that? I just couldn't quite... And the applicant is going to use that access. The existing one. Correct. Right. So it's, a, it's, not a, it's not a point, really. I was just curious. Thank you. Sure. Stephanie, I think I can help. I was on the board when that came up. Oh. Most of the neighbors, they increased the density, Mr. Lau, uh, considerably on this particular, it goes a little farther yet out of our picture. And most of the neighbors uh, indicated at that time, uh, the Wheaton College, uh, the gentleman that's the uh, uh, nursery at the end, towards the end of the road, Mr. Ardency, all those folks paid for that road. And they did not get in his way about increasing density, but they were quite vehement that he wasn't going to use their road. Okay. He could use the same access. But that's my concern about this division is because now uh, one of the homeowners you can see now is losing his buffer from that increased density that was done a number of years back with no conditions. He says it's for its son. And that's fine and, and well and good. But now we got one acre sitting alongside of three acre requirements. And you do indicate that he's got to come in for a rezone. But I think if we approve this today, all we're doing is heading into one of those things where it's contentious. We're going to have all these people that came back in here originally years ago about the increase in the density in the first place. Uh, I'm not sure I, I can go along with the, the one acre because I, I remember what was involved in getting the density there in the first place. And that buffer certainly had that neighbor not concerned about a one-acre lot sitting alongside them. Thank you. Great. 
And this is just a plan, a layout plan, so that we can vet out these issues beforehand. But you know, if, if I may, I, I don't quite follow, because when I look at like this map right here, sure, I just see a tremendous amount of suburban residential right across Wheaton Road, and there's all sorts of homes on lots that I didn't really look all these up, but they look to me to be, you know, well, it's, it's, it's suburban residential, so they're small lots. Sure. So I don't quite understand, um, I guess I don't understand, granted there's one we would create or that we would allow the creation of a one acre parcel north of Wheaton, but considering all this, all these small lots, I just don't understand what, what the trouble would be. Yeah. I can help out a little bit. There was another element that was involved, and that was the water that from the, I believe it's Sanders Water District uh, that goes in this. And then that was available to him if he increased the density over there. And that was also a, a factor. That was not that dense at that time. There was like one or two lots over there total on that side of the road when it took uh, don't hold me to this, but I know it was three years, two to three years in review before that was done. That's how contentious it was for these other people. As you'll notice, these other <laughs> folks have all large pieces of property. Right. But, I mean, right now, there's a lot of... They this were, these were large, this was large up here, and it was uh, contiguous and, and, and went along with that. These others, they lived alongside them, but they put that road in there, the, these folks that have the larger pieces of property. That's, and they stayed out of his way as long as he stayed off the road at that time. So do they have enough water in that area for the suburban uh, residential already and then they'd be adding to it? Is that an issue in that area? I would have to do some research on that one. Okay. Brittany, you know anything about it? I do remember that now that you Sanders said Ranch that. Mm -hmm. Water District. And that we would have to contact the water system, um, and that's part of the subdivision regulations um, for the preliminary plat, that they would have to meet that portion of it. Um, we could get a hold of that um, water district to ensure that they will provide a, a tap and water to that. So this is that the, lot. like um, these guys said, it is the layout plan. So at the next preliminary plan, we could have some of that information of how they're um, doing their water systems and stuff too, to satisfy, to make sure we're doing things right. The people, just to help you there, the people behind, they're on, I'm pretty sure they're on their own wells in the yellow here. Yeah. And it looks like what's happening is all those low density up front, uh, Charlie, are turning to suburban. They're selling their lots. And that's usually what happens is once they see people can make some money off their properties, they're going to start um, Turn them into. I believe the one acre will go up for sale, yes. Yes, sir. Well, I think that whole area is going to end up doing that eventually yeah. because of cash flow. Further questions? Note there is no one from the public in the audience on this item. Uh, recommendation is for approval of layout plan LPL 20 12 with 12 conditions. Is there a motion? Also move approval. I'll second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Hearing none, seeing none, roll call vote. Rich. Aye. Charlie. Nay. Jim. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Travis. Aye. Kathy. Aye. Deb. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, brings us to item 10. Good morning, Commissioners. Brittany Molitor again. Item number 10 is layout plan LPL 20-28 to subdivide and create lots 1 through 114 of Preston Ranch subdivision. Um, this property is located along South Highway 79 along the Custer County and Pennington County um, county lines. The applicant, John Preston, is requesting to subdivide approximately 577 acres into 114 lots. The lot size will range from approximately three and a half acres to 14 acres. This, the plan is to develop in three phases. Phase one will consist of approximately 37 lots. Phase two will consist of 40 lots. And phase three will consist of 37 lots. A portion of this subdivision is also located within Custer County. 
Uh, 11 of the lots are 11 additional lots are located in Custer County and will take access off of Shore Road within the subdivision portion located in Pennington County. As the property exists today, there are three um, parcels that are shown above. Um, they are zoned General Agriculture District. The future land use is agriculture for these. Um, one of the lots is 100, approximately 117 acres. The special flood hazard area on these properties is the Zone D, which is a possible but undetermined flood hazard. This lot does contain a 40 by 60 barn, a 24 by 64 loafing shed, a 17 by 35 greenhouse, and a 12 by 12 shed. And the access off of this property is off of Murphy Road, which is a Pennington County Highway Road and is maintained by the Highway Department. The second lot is zone general agriculture. The future land use designation is agriculture. It's approximately 279 acres. The special flood hazard area is zone D again. There's possible but undetermined flood hazard. This one is vacant of any structures and access is off of Shore Road and South Highway 79. And finally, the third lot, which is the southernmost lot that borders Custer County, is zone general agriculture. The future land use is agriculture. It's approximately 181 acres. The special flood hazard area again is zone D. It is vacant of any structures and access is off of Shore Road and South Highway. 79. So the proposed lots, um, phase one, I'll show here, would be in the green. This is along the Custer County um, county line. Um, the lot sizes will range from 3.3 acres to 8.11 acres. Um, a lot size variance or rezone would be required um, for all the lots in this phase. Uh, lot two, or excuse me, phase two is shown in the pink. Um, our lots 38 through 77, the lots will range in size from 3.4 acres to 7.5 acres, and a lot size variance or rezone will be required for all the lots in this phase also. And lastly, the phase 3 is the shown in blue. It's lot 78 through 114. The lot sizes will range from 3.39 acres to 14 acres. A lot size variance or rezone will be required for lot 78 through 80 and 82 through 114. Uh, this was routed around through the Interdepartmental Review. Um, there were some items that came back. Uh, County Highway would like to see a drainage study to um, verify that post-development flows do not exceed pre-development flows. Roads within the development need to be built to Ordinance 14 standards. Murphy and Shore roads need to be improved to asphalt surfaces in accordance with Ordinance 14 standards. Um, additional comments from Highway was that prior to completion of Phase 2, Murphy Road will be improved to an asphalt surface from South Highway 79 to Shore Road. Prior to completion of Phase 3, Shore Road will be improved to an asphalt surface from Murphy Road to the county line and that the interior roads can be gravel and built in accordance with Ordinance 14 standards. Uh, the environmental planner did make comments that this area has a significant amount of shale, that shale is challenging for conventional on-site wastewater treatment system. Staff does not support waiving the soil profile hole and percolation test requirement for this area due to the soil types and geology. Uh, due to the number of lots and very limited soil types in the area, a lagoon or community system to serve the subdivision is recommended and there is attached soil and geological information for the proposed properties in your packet. I also do have them on the slide. Um, other things that came back, the South Dakota Department of Na Environment and Natural Resources drinking water program did come back that Black Hills Rural Water System will be supplying water to Preston Ranch subdivision through their Paramount, Paramount Point water system. Each lot of Preston Ranch subdivision will be individual uses of Southern Black Hills and Southern Black Hills will maintain the distribution system within the subdivision. And there is adequate drinking water capacity to serve Preston Ranch subdivision. And they are aware that any plans, excuse me, the applicants are aware that any plans and specifications must be submitted to the drinking water program at DENR for approval. Uh, Black Hills Electric Co-op um, would request that their current facilities be shown on the plat before the final plat is approved. Um, this was routed to Custer County. Um, staff did speak with the Custer County um, Planning Director and the Highway Superintendent. Um, they are in agreement that Shore Road um, be um, have an asphalt surface. 
Um, so they are in um, agreement with that and, and they would like to work with Pennington County um, closely on this plan so that the it is consistent um, throughout the process. Uh, this was also routed to the Department of Transportation. Um, they have looked at those existing approaches um, off of South 79. Uh, the applicant will have to get approval of those approaches, but they do not believe that the um, that the approaches are appropriate and there wouldn't be any additional um, turning lanes required for those. Um, so as far as what staff is concerned about, a rezone would be required to allow a future subdivision. Uh, due to the very limited soil types and shale, staff is recommending a community lagoon or drain field um, in Murphy and Shore Roads would need to be um, improved to asphalt surfaces as they, as they are maintained by the Pennington County Highway. Um, and staff is recommending approval of this layout plan with 35 conditions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Just a couple on the drainage, the road uh, by County 14 standards, the asphalt surface on Murphy and Shore Road, um, and the community lagoon for me, um, those are gonna be huge things on the prelim uh, not the layout plan for now because um, you guys will bring your set of plans next. Um, we have had too many um, phase um, areas wow. in Pennington County where the second access hasn't been finished, different things like that. So I'll be looking for that because what happens is, is phase one doesn't pan out quite well and the second access is in phase three or... Uh, different things like that that are happening or a short road won't be done till we get into phase three. Um, to me, um, all of those things that I mentioned, I think need to be done before uh, in phase one, just because if it's gonna pan out, that's great. But if it doesn't, we're getting stuck in Pennington County with um, substandard um, roads, no second accesses and drainage areas that are incomplete, um, holding ponds, uh, things like that that are not complying with phase two and phase three because I didn't do it. It was Jim's fault or whoever. But um, for me, that's pretty important for me for the future, just so you guys know. Um, for, that's my personal thought, not, not this board. So um, just from seeing it in the past and been here for, what, five years, almost six years, um, those are some of the problem areas. I'm not against this development. I think it's it can be good, and bottom line is if those things can happen um, right away instead of in phases, for me, works a lot better for me to approve something. Well put. Any further questions? I have one question. Kathy. Um, Brittany, regarding the uh, study to show, the drainage study to show that the um, post-development flows do not exceed pre-development, I mean, studies like that, do they do that assuming that all the houses are built and that the, there's there's, um, you know, asphalt or, you know, concrete in front of their garages and so on, or is it those studies done before the houses are built? I mean, how does that work? So with the drainage study in a subdivision, um, and we've seen these in other subdivisions like Murphy Ranch, they take into consideration all impervious areas, which would be roofs, any... Um, Once the house, they assume that the house, it's all built out, and then here's what the result would be. Correct, and with the roads and the asphalt and the drainage, mm -hmm. uh, most subdivisions of this size would require some kind of detention facility. Um, right, that's what, so that, so mm -hmm. in other words, okay, that's what I wanted to make sure that the drainage study <coughs> took into account, count the situation when it was fully built out and you're saying it does? Correct. And number, so number 18 is really the response to number 12. Correct. The, the drainage improvements would be done um, which would be the detention pond or something. Or something similar, correct. Yeah, okay, so that's why I was making sure that 18 and 12, one was the analyses and then one was the solution to the problem or to the situation. Correct, so when they submit their drainage information, um, our office will send that over to the drainage engineer at the highway department for review. And so any comments that he would have on that drainage study would be forwarded to this uh, commission as part of the preliminary plaque process. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Yeah. Since Pennington County does not have building codes, and I don't suspect that we're going to head in that direction in a big hurry, maybe we are, the, the soils, uh, 
study that was put in here is indicative of not real good soil conditions. And you've got structural things that go along with those soil conditions, not just septic. And we've ha had a previous problems in this county, and we have very plastic soils here. Um, I think somewhere along the line, we've got to look at having conditions in regarding to the structural integrity of the foundations that go into these. A lot of these places are built, and rightfully so, I support it. Uh, they're sold as spec lots, and, and a contractor moves in, and we have a lot of those contractors, builds the place. Well, we also find out that one contractor has a different level of building uh, expertise and maybe how he applies his versus another. And, and if we don't have some structural specs on foundations with our soils, I think I'd be concerned uh, continuing to look at these sort of things. But uh, I realize that, that that condition doesn't belong here, but I think I'm going to join uh, Commissioner Hadcock's uh, comments there, too. I think they need to know that down the road these things are important to us. Thank you. And then maybe in the future, um, we have licensed contractors, so that might help because once you have licensed contractors in the county, then you find if they are not building, you know, indicative to making good houses or, you know, building stuff right, you can also revoke their license in the county, which then you, at that point, you're not having the inspectors and everything. I mean, that could be a futuristic thing, but I think the licensed contract contractors would be a, a good step for Pennington County. Thank you. Further questions? I have a slew of them, so I was letting everyone else go. <laughs> and uh, Brittany, if you can't answer these, I, I can. we can let the, the folks in the audience to okay. maybe address them, but I'll start with you. Okay. Um, you said Southern Hills will maintain the system within the subdivision as well? Correct. That was the comment from the drinking water program, DENR, okay. um, that they would. And I also made that a condition um, of approval that they maintain some kind of agreement and they file it with the Register of Deeds. So there is maintenance of that internal infrastructure within the subdivision. Okay. So, hmm, you know, so the, they will need to follow the requirements of the state for the water system as well as the Southern Hills requirements. Is that... or, or Southern Hills will own the system when it's done? In that, I do not know. Um, as far as when I had talked to the state at this point, um, I just wanted to verify that water was available um, and that the capacity was able to do that. As far as them negotiating, whether it's the HOA or a sanitary district internally, um, I don't think that that has been determined at this time. Okay. Sewer, um, your thought is is that there would be some sort of a lagoon system for the entire uh, subdivision? Is that that then that's staff's recommendation? It's staff's recommendation is that there is some lagoon or community system if there are soils that would be conducive of a larger system. Um, just looking at the soil maps and the geology and the amount of shale in the area, I think some of the lots would be difficult, if not impossible, um, to get anything on but an ET bed or a, a mound system. Um, so those are just staff's recommendations. Okay. Um, but none of that's been submitted by the applicant yet? No, this okay. is very preliminary. Got it. Um, I'm not exactly I, what, familiar with what, uh, what was it, something 14 standards, road standards? Ordinance 14. Or, ordinance 14 road standards. So I, I'll have to dig into that and, and review that. But those are the, those are the county standards for roads, local systems, those types of things. Correct. Okay. So when I did talk to the highway superintendent, um, he was in agreement that he felt that the internal roads within the subdivision could be the 24 foot wide, six inches of gravel um, with the two foot ditches. Um, he felt that those would be okay on the internal. Um, he also stated that for a road district, those are much easier to maintain. Um, and keep up as far as monetarily wise versus an asphalt. Um, they did recommend that Shore Road and Murphy Road be brought up to asphalt standards. Um, and Custer County was also um, going to require that on their portion of Shore Road. So that was my next question then. Can I throw in, did, would that mean then the 65-foot right-of-way as well for the Ordinance 14? 
So it'd be, it's the 66 foot. And I do believe that some, foot. both of those do have okay. um, a you. fair amount of right of way there. Um, so yeah. the, they would, th this hasn't likely been submitted yet, but the idea is, is that the homeowners association would maintain it with the, with road district or something along those lines. Correct. Um, with this, the, with the number of lots that are out here and the amount of internal roadways, that would be a. The a county road. would not take over this new road system. No, the county already will maintain Murphy and Shore roads. Okay. I didn't see anything about um, utilities. I know that there's power that runs along the highway there. Is there gas and fiber optic, all that stuff out there? I do not know the answer to that. I do know that Black Hills Electric Co-op did want to have their facilities um, identified on here. Okay. So. Um, is there any estimate on the number of years that the developer is planning for the phase out of the specific phases? That would be a question for him. He's okay. In the we'll let we'll let him do that one. Um, we were, there was already a bunch of talk about the drainage. I'll let that stand where it's at. Um, did the city of Hermosa weigh in at all? I know that the county Custer County um, guy asked to get if Hermosa had weighed in on anything yet. I have not received any information from Hermosa. I did talk to the Custer um, planning director and or I believe that she was going to reach out to Hermosa to see if they had any concerns. Um, I believe that this would be in the Hermosa's planning jurisdiction. Okay. Um, looks like there's a section line that between section 18 and section 19 that goes through phase three. I assume that'll need to be vacated and Correct. If they don't want to vacate it, they at least have to waive their improvement requirements through the subdivision regulations or vacate that. My only concern with not vacating something like that is, is um, you end up leaving it open, which means other people have legal right to go through. So I, I don't know how we don't get away from vacating the section line, but maybe a surveyor could weigh in on that. Um, I. I think the rest of my questions probably will get answered when the details come forth with the preliminary. Thank you. Okay. Further questions? Okay. Would anyone in the audience like to speak on this issue? Please state your name when you get up to the dais for the record and then if we could just keep it to one person at a time and we'll, right. we'll address if there's questions. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is John Preston. Uh, I'm the owner of this property. This is John McBride from Anderson Engineers, and he's going to answer your questions. And uh, between the two of us, we might be able to do that this morning. So, yeah, like you said, I'm John McBride with Anderson Engineers. Uh, to first off, I can answer your question. We did contact her most of the have they do have a copy of this layout plan. It is under their jurisdiction, and uh, but I haven't heard anything back from them. Just we submitted it and let them know what we were doing. Uh, it probably would be wise to vacate that section line when we proceed with this. Yes. Um, another question we had is. Reducing the number of lots on the west side of the property to just a couple home sites against Shore Road and everything else access internally to eliminate the expense of asphalting all the way around and then just upgrade from where those access roads from there out to 79 if that's a possibility. Either okay. eliminate access altogether or just a couple better home sites and just reconfigure the lot configuration on that side. Uh, that'll have to be re between you guys um, and, and the, the developer and, and I, I guess the county. So if you guys uh, wanted to do something different than what's been submitted at the layout plan, then then that, that process needs to go back through the review um, because I, I think the, the county folks, both Custer and Pennington County, gave rec recommendations based on this layout that layout okay so um i'm i'm not going to speak for those folks we'll let that process work okay 
So basically, this is just your plan. And if you're going to change your plan, it would be time to change the layout plan through the layout plan, if I'm correct, Brittany, to the preliminary plan of what you might want to do. I don't know if that eliminates you. Um, you can ask for variances on your your roads and different things to pave, but I don't know if that, you know, until that this board or our board decides that that's not okay, um, then we move forward with, with paving it. But if you're wanting to change the lot sizes and do some different things based on that, I mean, you'd have to change it between layout and preliminary if I'm right, Brittany. That is correct. And I would speak with the county highway superintendent and the county drainage engineer because those were recommendations that came from that office. So I think um, working through that with that department would be, and then if something come up from that and then that proposal um, for the preliminary. Especially, I'm sorry. Sorry, sir. Especially if it's their rec recommendation, um, they might find some solution with you on on if you change your preliminary or your layout plan uh, between the layout plan and the preliminary plan. Um, they might work with you on that depending on what you're going to do. So um, that's who you would call if you're going to change like the road systems or you want to do something different. What would that do to the timeline? Would we have to resubmit a whole new layout and start completely over? Or? Okay. <laughs> no, that could be addressed at the preliminary. Um, so in your preliminary, you would um, submit. And in the way that you have it phased, you could submit a preliminary plan for each of the phases. Um, you could submit a new layout plan. Um, it, it's uh, whatever your timeline is and whatever... Um, the recommendations that come from the highway department. So um, somebody had asked you, sir, what is what is the timeline? Because for me, the the phases and not finishing uh, pretty crucial roads, sir. Um, because phase one might not work out for you, then we're gonna not gonna have a second access, or we're gonna have a road that's in not in compliance for the for the next guy that says, you know, Mr. Preston, that was his job, um, and he doesn't finish it. So how do we get that assurance or maybe we have to get a surety bond on those roads um, if you guys decide not to to pave them maybe that's the solution but i don't know on what your thoughts are sir that, that is a question for john but the, it looks like a generic generic phase there but the topography and the way the roads are set up with turnarounds at the end of every one of those roads and the way the drainages are all configured they're pretty close to I mean, if phase one could be just its own, I mean, the, the, there's no major drainages. They all go north to south or east to west. And so, but I still understand your concern and the, the timing is actually more of a question for John. The planned total amount of time to do these three phases, of course, it's, you never know, but um, five years, for all three. So you're gonna have them done in five years or five years? Five years for the green, five years for the red, and five years for the blue? Five years for all three to be sold. Okay. Have you sold any lots in this yet, sir, Mr. Preston? Uh, I'm a real estate broker. <laughs> this is my- That'll help. Uh, I did Spring Creek Acres, which yes, is sir. east of Highway 79, about four miles. That's the only other one in Paynton County. I've done several in Custer County. And how many, uh, have you done those those uh, developments in phases? Uh, Spring Creek Acres we did, yes. So that was Custer County, sir? Spring Creek Acres is Paynton County. Okay. So tell me one more time. You've done this before where, honey? Spring Creek Acres in Paynton County, which is four miles east of Highway 79. Um, and you fit, you follow through, and you, you've got that development done, sir. It's done, yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Further questions for the applicant and the engineer? Okay. So I, I want to boil down the process that I just heard you say and the answer to them, so it's crystal clear in my in my brain. Um, so they they don't necessarily wouldn't have to come back through a preliminary uh, plan. Uh, application uh, for this. At this point, 
the owner and the applicant could go meet with the associated folks that made recommendations that maybe now they want to change their plan slightly. Get, in, get on the same page with those folks with regards to sequencing of paving of specific access points, et cetera, et cetera. And they could come forth with a preliminary plan with, with those discussions already in place. Does that? That's correct. So with the preliminary plan, so there's still two more phases of this. So you have your preliminary plan and then you have your final plan. So even though with the preliminary plan, and I had met with Mr. Preston and we had talked about just doing preliminary plans for each of these phases, um, because then at that point, you know, when you have to post surety and do those things, you can do them in phases versus over the whole subdivision. Um, so each subdivision, um, especially with the subdivision this size and you're moving forward, the preliminary plans probably from phase to phase are going to change okay. you know, from time to time just based on, you know, wh whatever sales that you potentially have. You get in there with the road construction, different things like that. So going into those phases um, and, and they will change. That's why the process you do have, you know, going through to the final plan. Okay. So. Thank you. Right. I have a couple of questions on surety. So on the surety, is there a timeline on surety? Meaning if Mr. Preston uh, finishes phase one and his surety, um, he passes it off to Brittany and she's going to do phase two and three. Um, does his surety stay with that property? Meaning he has that stays until those phases are done or does it pass off to the next person? So the surety would be for whatever construction you're doing. So if he submits the preliminary plan for phase one, the surety would be for all of the improvements that will be part of that phase. So he'll have a breakdown of each of those. So once those are all done, the, we'll go out and inspect, highway goes out and inspects, and then it comes in front of the board of commissioners and the board of commissioners releases that surety saying, yep, all the improvements are there, everything is good to go, and they release it. Then when they submit for the next one, that will be subject to whatever requirements are under that phase. But if you submit surety uh, with each preliminary plan, mm -hmm. are all those preliminary plans coming to you at the same time with surety? They, I, I'm not envisioning these would all come at the same time. Phase one will be at that, one point and then phase two will be at the, uh, one point and then phase that, three. That would be my point because then if you didn't have surety for the, <clears throat> the roads and things in phase two and three, then you would end up with the same problem again that we're talking about. So maybe there needs to be something different where the surety is is through the whole development. And then at that point, if he sells it, then he sells it with, you know, saying you have to post surety. I post a surety. This is going to count towards selling of the property. Because, again, if you do it, that that's the biggest issue is you post it in two and three when it comes through. If he never does two and three, not that you aren't, sir. But... Um, if that never happens, then those roads aren't going to happen because we didn't have any surety to build them in the first place, Brittany. So just, right. just a concern. So if you do, like, if you look at the red circles on there, those are like turnarounds. So <clears throat> let's say that, that, that phase two never gets done. Right. Those will actually be constructed and that would be the terminus of that development. Right. Um, and then nothing would go forward anymore. Um, the way that, it, the way, the way that I'm seeing how it's designed, and t tell me if I'm wrong, but in in that sense, so let's say they do phase one and something happens, they still have those cul-de-sacs there, those round, and so that would be the terminus, that would be the end of that subdivision. Would they still have a first and second access if they did that? Or yes, because they would, they would still come in off of South 79 and they would still be able to come out on Shore Road in Custer County. So you would assure that no matter what, that they'd have a turnaround and we wouldn't have a 40-unit rule or anything because we don't have those things. Right. right. Those things would still have to be constructed because phase one is dependent on Custer County and that Shore Road also. So that is something that we spoke to them about because that's going to be your second access is coming out on the Shore Road unless they reconfigure it and they come out on Shore Road, you know, to the west. Which makes more sense because in other areas it's safety factors and in this case if they have a first and second access with turnarounds, there isn't a, there ends up not being a 40 unit rule or a second access issue because that's most of the time uh, the biggest issue we have, Mr. Preston. So that does make sense in, in yours with the phase one, phase two, and phase three, so... I believe from looking at this, when they designed it, that's what they had in mind with the cul-de-sacs in case there was ever a point at which they didn't continue on to the next phase. Okay. I'm going to extend on what Deb just said. Um, 
let me ask you this. So phase one would include roadways, it would re include turnarounds, and all of those things would be designed according to the, 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 the specifications and design requirements right now. But let's, and then let's say they start phase two, but phase two may make the cul-de-sac length longer than it should be. At that point, could it be appropriate for this board to require them to not only bond for phase two, but also the extension of roads into phase three to their secondary access point? Could there be some sort of a, a scenario like that where um, to ensure that we, we don't get ourselves in, in the situations that Deb is explaining? So I would say for phase one, if you look at the way that it's designed, at phase two, the only concern would be that there's that one access on the bottom that comes out to cell 79, and they would have to go through the whole subdivision mm -hmm. um, without getting to the north. Um, so as a require, or as a stipulation for the approval of phase two in the preliminary, you could require that road be constructed okay. into phase three. So I think that that answers your question, Steb. Yes. It, it, it certainly is within our purview to request that um, a bond be made for to ensure that there's there's no uh, uh, we, we don't exceed the 40 40 unit rule and and the designs for the specific turnarounds so good Thank you. Brittany okay I understand we're still going to get two more looks at this thing when they come back for preliminary do you uh, note like the changes that are being requested in other words in a set of I, I don't know how you handle that now in other words if they come in uh, I'm trying to think of what uh, gentleman just said that he was thinking of changing it right now uh, when that comes back on preliminary do you know that and that the comments from the other uh, agencies that, that would be related like highway Custer that sort of thing Yes, because the preliminary is a whole new application. So the layout plan is just basically what we consider a concept plan. It's just kind of an overview. Hey, let's see what the issues are going to be. Let's see what the concerns are going to be. And then they address those at the preliminary. So they'll take a look at those. And those are the times when, you know, the road construction plans, you know, they're, they're preliminary or submitted. Then drainage plan is submitted. So there's a better idea of, you know, the exact... Mm -hmm. um, plan and the process and then that way too that you know you stipulate based on you know what exactly is going to be done like I said there, this is very preliminary as far as you know you can see that they already had just just from going through this process there's some concerns about short road so they're looking at changing that and that's kind of the purpose of these layout plans you picked right up on where I was at in other words we're going to get an opportunity to look at those changes as yes. they end up getting set in the middle of their lap that they've got to look at to, and they've got to pay for down the road to make it a good development. But my last question would be, and this, I think this helps with the release of bonds and that sort of thing. Do you get an engineered set of as-builts uh, submitted back from these folks that you review then? So in the past, there has been two subdivisions, excuse me, one subdivision and then another um, commercial property that we had bonded and we did have plans. We did have inspectors that went out and verified those plans and that information is presented to the Board of Commissioners and then okay. based upon that information, they can release or continue that charity. That was, again, my point, so that the commissioners get the final review and can say, this is what's out there and if something comes up later, you guys can flip to the same print that they flip to when you look at, at encountering something because many things come up, thousands of things are going to happen. Thank mm -hmm. you. Co-chair, um, Charlie, there's a, or a layout plan. That's the guesswork basically that, that the developers do in the preliminary plan we see again. So you right. see the layout plan, the preliminary plan, and the final, the final plan or final plat is Brittany. It's her office. So you see it twice. So this will be a first and you'll see it one more right. time. Yes. Okay. Understood. Yes, Thank sir. you. Further questions? Okay. Uh, does anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? Do you wish to speak on this, ma'am? <laughs> okay. Just want to make sure. Um, with that, I lost my, my paper. Um, staff is recommending approval of layout plan LPL 20-28. And at this time, there's 35 conditions. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. 
Motion and second. Further discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, uh, noting that uh, their final comments on this were obtained. Uh, roll call vote. Rich. Aye. Charlie. Aye. Jim. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Travis. Aye. Kathy. Aye. Ted Aye. Motion carries. Brings Thank us you, to item 11. Thank you. Good morning again. Uh, item 11 is a county board report and the board of commissioners will be hearing the planning commission's recommendations from the September 14th meeting at the board of commissioners meeting on October 6th. So there was a kind of a weird timeline there. So um, they won't be hearing this until the October 6th. And you guys do a great job, even if we get beat up. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling some love today, sorry. Yeah. Um, next item is items from the, the public, uh, number 12, noting that there is no one in the chambers here. Um, one would be calling. Item 13, items, items from staff. One last thing, we did hire an environmental planner. Um, he is actually up in the office. Um, and I'll have him come down at the next planning commission meeting. Um, his name's Aaron Tiemann. Um, he has quite a bit of experience, uh, 14 years at DENR. So he is a big asset to our office. He's uh, went out last week on some inspections and pretty much hit the ground running. So, and Brittany, I'd just like to uh, say that you and your office with Colin have, um, we've had some meetings there moving us ahead further than we've been in a long time. And your staff has been pretty awesome. Um, you've taught him a lot and um, let him kind of move ahead in what they do. So um, getting very knowledgeable on many things. So um, we've noticed that as commissioners, I don't know as plan, I won't speak for the planning commissioners, but um, it's it's been a tremendous help of all the things that we have, or you have and your team have done for Pennington County. Brittany. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, next item is items from the membership. Seeing none, I will, I'll just comment, Deb, I, uh, during the discussion, um, I certainly understand the, the call the question and, and to get things moving forward, um, and Sandra, the, this goes to you too, but um, I want to make sure that as a board, we're, we're allowing everybody in the audience that wants to, you know, yeah. speak on the item, um, be able to do so, and that, that this goes back to the CUP decision that was made. Um, at the Supreme Court level, so um, that was my that was my intent. It's uh, they've kind of put us in a weird spot as far as the Roberts Rules of Order go. But um, any questions on that? No, Chair, that was me. Um, I just don't take well when somebody says we do nothing, we have done nothing. I got and that. So Deb. I, yeah. I I apologize. No, nope, um, loud and clear. My uh, or our staff works their butt off, and. Um, we did go out there and we did do um, due diligence for these people more than once. And sometimes it just gets my going. Most of the time I just let it go. But um, I guess uh, I need to quit getting baited by people in one sense. The main thing is just say the facts, meaning yep. um, that our staff does do, a, again, a very good job. So I do apologize. And, and I wasn't offended when you said not to do that. Um, you are the chair. And uh I believe I probably would have done the same thing. Because yeah, I just wanted to make sure that uh, someone doesn't come back later on and, and say that they weren't allowed process um, in, in, at the Planning Commission. So You, you do well, and uh, I do apologize. Um, nope, no need to apologize. Just following up after the fact. Chair, Go well, ahead, my, Kathy. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Well, <laughs> my concern was she didn't know she'd already won. I mean... She kept going and going and going and going and going. Sandy, I, I, I thought, why, why is she doing this? Why is she even uh, <laughs> recommendation is already? But I hate to interrupt, Mr. Chair, but I don't think we should discuss uh, that. I think it should uh, speak for itself. Your decision and everything that went into the decision, um, discussing it after the fact, is not going to help anything. So Noted. I appreciate you guys wanting to explain your decisions and, and the process, but I don't think that's something that we should get in today. Right. So I, thank you. I, Noted. Thank you. I, I, do, I do have one 
I do, I do have one. Can I ask him a question first? Let's go to Kathy and then. What you're saying. And, and I understand why you did it, but you indicated to me that you thought I was getting a little off the subject. And what concerned me was that what happened next proved exactly what I was saying, how quickly opinions vary from the citizen that's sitting there to the attorney, to us. And these things then cause additional legal, uh, what would I say, challenges for the county as well as the citizens and whatnot. That's the only reason I put that in there. I realized I was getting out of the question. And I should probably explain myself, Commissioner Johnson, the reason Please. why we wanna stay on the agenda topics is because nothing else has been noticed. So if we get off of that, and I don't think we strayed off to the point where there would be an open meetings violation, right. but that's the reason why we have to stick to the agenda items. If we don't do that, then we could get hauled in front of the Open Meeting Commission, and then it's a class two misdemeanor for you guys to get off of the agenda topics if you are found to have violated the Open Meetings violation. So I believe I was good. protecting the expenses of this county when I'm trying to explain <laughs> that, that as a citizen, and maybe I shouldn't be doing that. And but, I understand what you're saying. Commissioner Johnson, I'm just sure. pointing out that sometimes um, when we're getting down a path that might be considered off agenda, that's when I'm going to come up and try to direct you guys to get back onto agenda because I'm doing that to protect you, to protect Pennington County, and then to protect the applicants because that means that potentially this matter doesn't go forward. Well, so Colin, that's just the reason why I come up I'll and leave I appreciate it. But I knew where I was at. It was what I was saying. I was a little offended at it at first when you said, I think we need to back up and get on the question. I knew we're still discussing the question. And the question is, what do these things do in regards to these expenses from them? We could have a, another party come in and sue us, and then we've got to spend more money. I think that's why you need to kind of look at a consensus of those folks that are here. And then I don't think you're getting off a meeting schedule when you're dealing with the people that are here. And she was very contentious. And, and we ended up, you know, exactly where I said we were going to end up. We had more and more people. The gentleman came up and very contentious about our staff. So that was why I didn't want to go without some idea that we all had an understanding of what we were dealing with. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. I understand. No, noted. Thank you. Sandy? No. No, it's Kathy. Kathy, Kathy. sorry. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to clarify something for my own benefit, and that is that, you know, there was some reference made to um, this board's action or consideration on the construction permit. And I just want to clarify, Brittany, if you would, our responsibilities when it comes to construction permits. So in our ordinance under the old 507, actually the planning director does do the approval for the construction permits. They were just in front of you to get any kind of comment or consideration. Uh -huh. um, I know that in the past there has been some appeal and some um, request by the neighbors to bring those permits in front of you and the Board of Commissioners for review. So that hasn't been at staffs or something that was part of our ordinance. That was at a citizen, the so, citizen's request. Right now, just so I, that's my, it was my understanding that the construction permit is really at, at, in your department, at your staff level. I mean, we don't get involved in those permits. Is that right? Correct. Under the old 507, under the new 507, um, you wouldn't either. Um, they all get approved by staff and then if they appeal it they would actually appeal it to the board of adjustment right. so the board of commissioners would see those under the board of adjustment so, if they don't like what that's right. our staff but is we, doing we really don't have any responsibility in that process no the only responsibility you have is if there's any ordinance amendment or if there's something that came up that you guys wanted to change in that ordinance okay. then it would be done through the ordinance amendment process. but without no mining permit is he still have a construction permit yes because he can still build his house or pull barn or whatever, right? He can still do the grading and such on his property um, under that construction permit. Um, he does have a requirement to get it stabilized, 
Um, so that is going to be, um, there is some question because it is. And we are checking on that, right? Yes. Okay. And, and I have talked and to Cody about that. And taking pictures and everything, just like we did last time. Okay. Yes. And with that court order, there was some, some stuff that we had to work out. The bottom line, what threw me is she kept take, talking about covenants, Colin, and we don't do covenants. So that's why I was like, um, if I was Commissioner chair Hattock. thing, then the covenants is where I would have the issues. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly, but I think that we should probably just not discuss okay. what went into that. Okay. Leave it in the agenda item. Thank you. Okay. Anything um, else from the membership? Move to adjourn. I second it. <laughs> Motion and second. Further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, seeing none, roll call vote. Rich. Aye. Charlie. Aye. Jim. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Travis. Aye. Kathy. Aye. Deb. Aye. Motion carries. We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone.